Nigeria is preparing for elections in an atmosphere of worsening insecurity, which stares the political actors and ordinary citizens in the face. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is ready. The parties are ready or getting set, but the environment is not at peace. The climate is cloudy, particularly in the northwest, the northeast and southeast, which, is, which areas are battling with a curious sit at, sit at home and internal strife. Based on INEX calendar, party primaries are to be concluded by June 3. Efforts to get INEC to change the, their stance has proven abortive. Hence, we can conclude that this month of May would be a decider for many presidential hopefuls and aspirants for other elected officers. Based on my last count, close to 30 aspirants have purchased the presidential, presidential tickets for the ruling APC party, having paid the outrageous ticket fee of 100 million naira. The main opposition party, PDP, on the other hand, has screened 17 presidential hopefuls. There is a resolve on every part of many people to get tickets for this presidential contest. It is important that we remember that our current economic and societal issues are a result of our decisions at, the success, at successive polls. The candidates presented at the general elections are a result of the primaries. Hence, we need to understand how the primaries work in Nigeria. The Electoral Act provides that candidates for whatever public office can be elected by indirect primary, direct primary, or through consensus method. In these forthcoming elections, the two main political parties are going to pick their presidential candidates using the indirect primary method. And delegates are the ultimate deciders. There are two types of delegates, the ad hoc and the statutory. The ad hoc delegates are picked by holding congresses in the wards across the country. Statutory delegates, a recent provision of the amended electoral act, are party members who have held public offices before. So you mean people like governors, ex-governors, and presidents and the likes. This amendment might be out of selfish interests of political po um, politicians, or otherwise, only time will tell. However, what we can say is that there would be more people to decide the buffet that will be served to Nigerians in 2023. After the delegates are selected, a convention will be held to enable them to decide on who will fly the party's gubernatorial or presidential flags. Although there's a limit to what we, the public, can do at this point with regards to the primaries, I would encourage everyone who has access to either the ad hoc or statutory delegates to advise, encourage, press on them, whatever method you can do, to encourage them to choose candidates at the primaries in which would be in the interest of a good nation. The offers from candidates might be tempting, but let's remember that the destiny of Nigeria and its people is dependent on their choices. We can become a better nation based on their decisions. We can also even become a worse nation than we currently are based on their decisions. So therefore, the destiny of 120 million Nigerians are in their hands. So, guys, what do you think? How can we, or rather, 200 million rather, how can we encourage delegates or to bring forward the right candidates? So, so who are these delegates? That's where we should start from. So we'll start from there. Statutory delegates are ex-presidents or ex-public um, office holders or even current public office Orders. But you then have ad hoc delegates that are usually selected through a convention. So, yes. And oftentimes these delegates are even being bribed. Of course. Recently, I, I saw a post where they said, um, uh, it has secured over 370 delegates. So I asked, secure in what sense? You see mm. that? You know, I don't want to go into the details of that. But mm. I hope the processes are, f are fair. Mm -hmm. I hope they are fair. They should think about the future of the country. So any, any political party now that uh, want to control, because this weekend, I think the, the election should be this weekend, right? Yes, yes. So by Monday, we know mm. yeah, okay, party, the yes. primary election. Yeah. Yes. So I just pray these parties, they will do the right thing. I hope so. I just pray and hope so. 
Why, why do I think that it's almost like, let me even use the, I don't like to say the word ruling, it just looks too tyrannic, you know, the leading party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think leadership is more better than rulership. So let's just say the leading party, APC, right, you know, why are there so many people that almost looks like those that can potentially become president? Does it, does it, I mean, somewhere I'm thinking, do they already know the result of the primaries? I think so. Uh, so that's, that's <laughs> so weird. Because it's, it's, so this is the, the corruption we keep talking about. So what is it? So what, why all the sham? Why all the whole this person coming out and running? You don't even know the joker that will come out tomorrow and say, I've bought the form, you know, you know, and you know. So they, they somehow know the result of the primaries. Who is going to come out? I mean, we have Jagaban already, you know, still in the race. So I'm just looking at this whole thing. So what's the essence? Is it even credible? If the primaries is not even credible, so what is the credibility of the main elections? So that's like mm -hmm. my, that's, that's what I'm, 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 that's what's been on my heart really concerning this whole thing. Uh, the thing about the, the primaries, I personally think that uh, there's, um, there's an element of uh, corruption in the primaries because we see even at the local government levels, even at the very low level, you see that um, in your small community, in your local government, your small community, you just ask one or two people, they're already like, oh, that lady is the one that will emerge. They've not had the primaries yet. That lady is the one that will emerge. She's the sister to the former, one of the, you know, she has that connection. So, you know, you can't just appear from the blues. You know, so the, I, I, I think that the process should actually be free, should be fair. I was encouraged when I saw a lady, I think Quara State, she's a very young lady. She picked up a form yesterday or two days ago. And a lot of people on Twitter started to speak to her. Oh, where did you get money for the form? Where did you get money for the form? Oh, who are you? Who is your father? That was a question on Those Twitter. Not yes, to be and she's a young girl. She's I think she's in her twenties. Yeah, she's in her twenties. And people said, "This form is two million naira. Where did you get the money? Who is your father?" That was a question wow. on Twitter. That's Who surprising. is your father? So now we need to ask ourselves: What if she had been saving this money, sa saving the money, seeking support from uncles and aunties that she wants to do this? This is her dream. She wants to be a change agent, you know. But you know that precedent we need to work on ourselves as nigerians and begin to do things up, uh, the right way every nigerian and any nigerian has the right to contest if yeah, okay. he or she fits in and let me even use the opportunity to address this issue now by extension mm -hmm. look at what is happening in Ogun state now the mm -hmm. governor the incumbent governor is contesting and then there's another woman in the party that's contesting recently there have been some kind of friction between both sides they are both members of the same party so the fact that somebody is coming outside to contest is not your enemy. So mm. you should not send talks after a political aspirant should not send talk after another one. It's, it's so barbaric. Yes. Why, so what are you scared of? What yeah. are they scared of? Why don't you allow the masses to decide? So I'm using this as an extension. If yeah. you know you're a politician, you're a governor, whatever you are, and you are sending talks after other candidates, then shame on you. <laughs> so what do you think? How can we take our primaries seriously? I mean, uh, I mean, the, the description that Ruth just gave is quite instructive. You know, the fact that there are um, the types of delegates, you know, I've never heard that before. It just shows how politically, politically ignorant, you know, most people are. And I'm, I'm not going to be quite honest with you. Because, you know, there's this case of apathy where you're not just really interested in the process because you know that the process is already rigged against you. So think about the whole concept of having to have a delegate, one former governor, former you know, political holders, political office holders, people that invest, they should not even be allowed to move near anything near, 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 near politics. You know, they are the sort of the constitutionally the mandated ones to be there. And the other ones that are not chosen from the convention. How was the convention designed? You know, how did they decide who should be at the convention and who shouldn't be? At the end of the day, it just starts to become clearer and clearer that this whole game just game of, you know, the highest bidder, who has the most money to spend? Whoever they're saying has clinched, you know, whatever number of delegates before, you know, the prime minister is clearly doing that with money. You know, so <sighs> the, the system is really is rigged against you already. It's designed to fail. You know, once the system is designed to fail, there's no need to try. What you must do is go out to the drawing board and redesign the system. 
shut down the system and redesign it. There's no point trying to, you know, can't keep doing the same and expecting different results. It's not possible. That's insanity. You know, and that's clearly, you know, the case. It's just this, you know, uh, joke of insanity that happens every four years. Okay, so there, there might be a limit to what we can do, but um, we hope that our delegates would select the right people for us so that we can vote them in during the general elections. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Shola is up next after this break. <laughs>